Hello class, this is Demetrius Wilson in Business Marketing. This is Chapter 11, Integrated Marketing Communications and the Changing Media Le Landscape. Uh, obviously, it's changed right before my eyes. Uh, most of you are, are, are much younger, and you've seen it change as well. Uh, but we have to stay abreast of the changes that occur and make sure that we aren't left behind in terms of technology and how we operate uh, in day-to-day -day business. Learning Objectives. Uh, understand what integrated marketing, marketing communications are, otherwise known as IMC throughout this course. Uh, understand why organizations may change their promotional strategies to reach different audiences. Uh, maybe uh, it's something that uh, was uh, specific to a younger audience, and now we're going to sell it to an older audience. All kind of different variables there. Integrated marketing communications uh, provide an approach designed to deliver one and only one consistent message to buyers throughout an organization's promotions. Right. So whether you hear it on the see it on the TV, hear it on the radio, uh, see it online or on your cell phone, it should all have the same consistent message coming from one company. One company, one message. Uh, changes in communication technology uh, and instant access to information. We all, hey, is this a, is this true or not? Let's go to Google and find out. Uh, through tools such as the internet, uh, use of social media, explain one of the reasons why integrated marketing communications have become so important. So I have to look it up on in Google, and then I see a billboard, or if I see a, a advertisement on TV, they should all be consistent. Uh, with IMC or organizations or integrated marketing communications, organizations can coordinate their messages to build the brand and develop strong customer relationships while helping customers satisfy their needs. So we want to build brand, create strong relationships to make sure that the customer is getting what they need from us. Changing media. Uh, as the media changes uh, landscape, uh, the money organizations spend on different types of communication uh, will change as well. Obviously, more money will be pulled, poured into uh, Internet marketing. Uh, some forecasts indicate that companies will spend almost 20 or have, because this is in the past, uh, spent 27% of their total promotional budgets or $160 billion on electric, non-traditional media by 2012. Uh, just, just think about it. And they'll talk about it later in the chapter. Uh, you know, I record a lot of stuff on DVR. And uh, when I watch it, I, a lot of times I fast forward through the commercials so I don't see them. So companies are saying, hey, we're paying for these commercials, but, uh, you know, nobody's watching them or somebody's pausing it, going to get popcorn, coming back and fast forwarding past it. Uh, how do we reach these people? Uh, the use of mobile marketing and uh, out of home advertising for promotions has gained popularity. You're not in the house. Maybe it's on a billboard. Maybe it's on a bus bench. All kind of different ways. Key takeaways, as always, be sure to read these to help you out on your quizzes. Uh, as the media landscape changes, marketers uh, may change uh, the type of promotions they use in order to reach uh, their target market. So read the rest of the key takeaways, as always. You know, put that in their brain as like a little, uh, a little uh, roll up about uh, the, the previous four or five slides. More learning objectives. Uh, understand the different components of the promotion uh, or communication mix and why organizations may consider all components when designing uh, the integrated marketing, um, when designing the, the program. Because uh, you have to think, if it's not something that works on um, on TV, uh, is it something, is, is that the route you should go? You need to have something and a way to advertise something that's consistent that works on TV, works on radio, works on the internet, works everywhere. Uh, understand the differences between types of communication targeting uh, many people uh, at one time versus targeting individuals. So do we target the masses or do we just target the 15 of you that are going to purchase uh, our product for a million dollars? Uh, promotional or communication mix elements. So you have advertising, uh, consumer sales promotions, trade promotions, direct marketing, and professional selling. Uh, we'll get into all of those and their definitions right now. So advertising is paying to disseminate a message that identifies a brand, uh, product, or service, uh, or the organization being promoted uh, to many people at one time. So you advertise on TV. Many people are watching it all at one time. It's not specific. It doesn't say, hey, Demetrius, would you like to buy these new Nikes? Uh, media use, television, magazines and newspapers, internet, direct mail, radio, mobile devices, social media, such as uh, Facebook, blogs, Twitter, things of that nature. So it just, it goes out to the masses. And uh, we hope that, you know, a good portion of those masses buy our product or service. Uh, consumer sales promotion, so short-term incentives such as coupons, contest games, rebates, and mail-in offers that supplement the advertising and sales efforts like the Monopoly games that you see, uh, buy one, get one free coupons, things of that nature. Um, business to business marketing, sales promotions are typically called 
trade promotions because they are targeted to channel members who conduct business or trade with the consumers, right? Uh, so it's not always about uh, marketing towards the consumer. Sometimes it's about marketing towards those in your in your channel uh, because they're going to get the products to the consumer. Uh, direct marketing involves the delivery of personalized and often interactive promotional materials to individual consumers via channels such as mail, catalogs, internet, uh, email, telephone, and direct response advertising. So we're coming directly to you. Uh, you're going to pack it in a mail with 55 coupons. Why? Because you just opened up a new business and we want you to do business with, uh, you know, with our company. <clears throat> Professional selling, uh, you know, I was in the sales, uh, in sales before at a couple of different companies. Uh, interactive, uh, paid approach to marketing, uh, that involves a buyer and a seller, right? So I'm selling, uh, copiers, uh, and I did sell copiers at one time. Uh, so the, the, the company, they would be the, the buyer or purchaser, and I would be the seller. Uh, ultimately my company is a seller because I'm not getting all of the money from the copier that I sell. Uh, business to business marketers generally utilize professional selling, right? So think about it. If you're selling something to a business, you're going to have somebody, you know, that comes in and can present themselves well and try and sell something to that business uh, more often than a business to consumer uh, uh, marketers, right? So if it's something that goes straight to the consumers, you don't have a door to door uh, salesperson attempting to sell them. Uh, public relations, and uh, you talk about this uh, for a, a good portion of Chapter 12, uh, public relations is perceived as more neutral and objective than other forms of promotion. So it seems like it's just coming from a third party, and bam, here it is, even if that those individuals work for your company. They want to make it very, uh, you know, very impartial. Uh, much of the information is tailored to sound as if it had been created by an organization independent of the seller. Public relations materials include press releases, publicity, and news conferences. Uh, many companies have an uh, internal um, public relations department, or the uh, the other route is you can hire a public relations firm. Uh, sponsorships. You see sponsorships all the time. We talk about in Chapter 12 as well. Uh, if you're a NASCAR fan, you see those cars, you know, flying around the track, but you can see that big Tide sign right on the front. You can see the big uh, uh, Oak uh, Quaker. Quaker's Oats, I think that's the oatmeal. Uh, you see that there and all the different other sponsor, sponsors that they have on their pens and things of that nature. Uh, financial support for events, venues, or experiences uh, and provide the opportunity to target specific groups, right? So I can guarantee you see all these Tide signs on all these cars. Everybody who's there, spectator at NASCAR, is going back and buying Tide because they say, hey, the drivers are buying it. They're not buying all. We should probably buy Tide, too. Uh, sponsorships enhance a company's image and usually uh, generate public relations. With an increase of uh, amount of money being spent on sponsorships, they have become an important component of the promotion mix, and that is very, very true. Uh, more key takeaways: technology is changing the way businesses and individuals communicate. We all know that. Uh, you know, have some people just uh, they don't even talk on the phone anymore; they just send text messages, and, and that's it. Uh, so, read the rest of the key takeaways. Talks a little bit about technology, how it's changed things. Uh, some for the good, some for the bad. Uh, more learning objectives, uh, understand that uh, different factors can affect the promotion mix, uh, understand the communication process, and understand different types of uh, message problems, right? Our messages don't always get relayed or delivered appropriately. Uh, factors that influence uh, selection and promotion mix, a number of factors uh, affect these uh, these different things. So budget available, how much money do I have to spend? Stage and product life cycle, right? So if uh, it's at the uh, you know growth stage, then maybe I'll spend a little bit more money than, more money than if uh, it's on the decline stage. Uh, type of product and uh, type of purchase decision, right? So sometimes it depends. If it's a uh, you know very expensive product, then you know you have to take a little bit more time. Uh, such, i.e., uh, the copiers that I was selling there. I mean, none of them were cheap. Uh, target uh, market characteristics and consumers' readiness to purchase. Uh, consumers' uh, preferences from uh, for various media, regulations, competitors, and environmental factors, and the availability of media. So here's the communication process. So the perpetual process is how se is a per is how a person decides what to pay attention to and how to interpret and remember different things, including information and advertising. So, you know, what I'm watching this commercial, but what do I want to pay attention to? What do I want to see? What do I want to get from this commercial? Uh, the communication process illustrates how messages are sent and received, right? So I send it to you. Uh, I interpret it a certain way. It gets decoded. You understand it this way. And then you respond. <clears throat> Uh, interference or noise can distort uh, marketing messages. So not just like noise outside, like, uh, you know, people doing construction or something like that, but noise that goes into your brain. People are saying that the product or the food's not good. Don't go there. Food's not good. You know, you shouldn't, shouldn't even touch that restaurant. It may make you think twice or make you not even go there. 
Uh, purchasing a product provides a sender with feedback, uh, which often tells a seller uh, that you saw the information and wanted to uh, try the product. And uh, you know, I've been there before, seeing like, hey, you know what? I I see this. I, I like it. I want to I want to purchase the product. Uh, so this is how the communication uh, process works. I want you to probably pause this and, and, and read through it yourself. But it goes from the sender, uh, which could be ad agency, marketing department. Uh, it gets encoded. So you convert the idea into words and pictures, and then you send it on through. Uh, <clears throat> the message uh, channel is uh, in-store display, radio, TV, ad, things of that nature. Decode, uh, interpret the message. And uh, the receiver, uh, customers or consumers, they are now going to receive a message that's interpreted the way that they believe it to be in, in, interpreted or the way that they believe it to be true. Uh, interference, noise, friends, other ads, uh, things of that nature, feedback uh, from receiver to sender. But I want you to go back, pause that, look at that colorful diagram and, and like it. <clears throat> so I skipped the slide. So key takeaways, uh, many factors such as the firm's marketing budget, the type of product, regulations, target customers, and competitors, they, they all have an impact. They all affect things, especially your, your budget. Can't do anything without that budget. More learning objectives, uh, understand the difference uh, between uh, media and vehicles, explain the similarities and differences between advertising and direct marketing, and uh, understand the benefits of direct marketing and what types of direct marketing organizations often utilize. <clears throat> so you have advertising media uh, vehicle, so advertising paid promotion that has identified sponsor and reaches uh, many people at one time. Remember we already talked about that. Uh, media is the general types of uh, communication, so you have television, you have radio uh, available for advertisers. Uh, and the vehicles, the specific means, right, the specific means uh, such as a particular magazine, so it could be a uh, you know, like Jet Magazine or something like that, a uh, specific television show within a medium to reach a selected target market, right? So uh, definitely three that you will, will need to know. <clears throat> Direct marketing allows uh, organizations to target a specific set of customers, right? Real specific set. This is a huge, and then we just want to go down to the, uh, to the subset. Uh, measure the return on investment and uh, test different strategies before implementing to all targeted uh, consumers, right? So instead of sending it to everybody who we think will buy it, let's just focus on this group of 25 and then go from there. Uh, can be personalized and ask uh, consumers to make a call to action, uh, which is a desired response. Uh, however, direct marketing is very intrusive and many consumers may ignore attempts to reach them, which is very good because I do that myself sometimes. Uh, telemarketing. So we all have our favorite telemarketers uh, that, that call our phone uh, right at dinner. So it involves direct marketing by phone. Although expensive, telemarketing can be extremely effective for charitable organizations and different uh, service firms and retailers. However, because some of the consumers have negative perceptions of telemarketers, many organizations uh, actually do not use it. Uh, they have the do not call registry, uh, you know, use that in my workplace as well, uh, prevents calling to phone numbers uh, registered with uh, the Federal Trade Commission. Direct response advertising is a little bit different. Uh, includes an offer and a call to action, right? So you get an offer and here's your call to action. Uh, they want consumers to call to purchase the product uh, to get more information. Uh, the internet provides the preferred direct response medium uh, for direct marketing because it leaves, because it's less expensive and easier uh, for the organization to utilize. Uh, more key takeaways, advertising is paid form of communication that has identified sponsor, uh, sponsor is very, very important, and uh, reaches uh, many people at one time. And that's the, that's the main key, it reaches many, many people at one time. Uh, more, more learning objectives, uh, understand what a unique selling proposition is and how is it used, like what's unique about your product and how can I advance upon this uniqueness to, uh, to sell this product to someone else. Uh, understand different types of promotion objectives and identify different message uh, strategies. So your unique uh, selling proposition or USP, uh, smart organizations determine a product's unique selling uh, proposition or specific benefit consumers will, will remember. So what specific thing about your product and or service uh, will, will people remember? Will they remember the slogan? Will they remember AD do, right? Uh, you know, is it, like what do they remember about, uh, you know, uh, your product? Like do they remember the little walking, talking m and M's? So you, you have to understand what that is and then take advantage of that, uh, of that uh, unique selling proposition. Uh, when deciding on a message strategy, organizations must consider the audience, the objectives of the promotion, the media, and the budget, as well as the unique selling proposition and the product. 
have to think about the budget. Uh, you can't go out and do anything if it's if it's over budget. You don't have any money. Uh, promotion objectives. Uh, demand for a product category is termed primary demand. So what's our primary demand for that product? Uh, demand for a specific brand is termed selective demand. Uh, so it's like, hey, you know what? We we need a specific brand. Not not that we need detergent, but we need Tide. Uh, the AIDA model includes several different uh, promotion objectives, including attention, interest, desire, and action, right? So how much attention do I pay to it? How much interest do I show? Uh, what is my desire to purchase it? And how likely am I to take action and purchase this product or not purchase it uh, in action? Uh, so message uh, characteristics. So some of the common advertising appeals are humorous, emotional, uh, frightening, rational, uh, and environmentally conscious. Uh, an open-ended message allows the consumer to draw his or her own conclusion. Uh, a closed-ended message draws a logical conclusion, right? So sums it up for you. Uh, the beginning and the end of the message should be strong and include the brand name. Uh, so you, you'd say, what what can we play upon people's emotions and you know their sense of humor and things like that? Uh, in terms of getting them to purchase our product and or our service or it could be fear like insurance uh, I have a video for for a different class and I'll, I'll see if I can find it and post it to, to this one uh, you know frightening you know that we're, you know we want to play on somebody's fear uh, you know they're they're scared that the El Nino is coming so we're gonna get flood insurance things of that nature uh, more key takeaways or organizations must determine promotion objectives so what, what is your objective what exactly are you trying to do uh, or what they want to accomplish uh, with their promotions. Uh, so as always, read the rest of the key takeaways. Uh, you know, press pause, read it there, or read it out of the the uh, PowerPoint and the resources. Uh, more learning objectives. Uh, understand the different ways in which promotional budgets can be set. Uh, always pretty much starts with the uh, you know with the sales budgets and goes uh, backwards from there. Uh, understand how the budget can be allocated among different media. So how much you know how much of the pie are we spending on TV? How much of the pie are we spending on radio? How much of the pie are we spending on newspapers? Probably not that much. Uh, how much is going to uh, internet? How much is going to text uh, marketing uh, through mobile phones? The promotion budget. Uh, so <clears throat> these are different ways that you can look at and handle your budget. Percent of last year's sales method, so a budgeting technique based on a set percentage of current or projected sales. The affordable method, a budgeting technique whereby companies spend what they think they can afford. A competitive parity method, a budgeting method whereby companies make sure their promotion budgets are comparable to other competitors. An objective and task method, a budget based on a company's promotion objectives and the cost of the act activities and tasks necessary to accomplish those actual objectives. Uh, so part of the budget uh, process includes deciding how much money to allocate to different media, like we said. Uh, mobile marketing uh, continues uh, to become more popular, a way to reach specific audiences. So spending on mobile ads is expected to grow 80% uh, from $1.45 billion in 2011 to $2.61 billion in 2012, which is, a, you know, it's a, it's a huge jump, but that's, that's actually what happened. A big part of the growth is due to mobile search uh, business of Google, right? So you go into Google, you're looking for stuff, and then all of a sudden you got this banner ad that says, hey, you know, uh, you want to buy this, this, this machine, this exercise machine, because you've been looking at it, and they know you've been looking at it, and now they're going to, you know, go full force. Every time you pick up that phone, every time you log on your computer, you're going to see an advertisement uh, for that exercise machine. Trust me, I know. Uh, key takeaways, uh, companies uh, can determine how much uh, to spend on promotional uh, or promotion uh, several different ways. So we went over the different ways, but still take a pause here uh, on the video, read the key takeaways, make sure that you know and understand them, and then go from there. Uh, our last learning objective is uh, learn about different types of sales promotions uh, companies use to get customers to buy their products. Understand the different types of sales promotion companies use with their uh, business customers. Uh, understand why sales promotions have become such an integral part of an organization's promotional mix and differentiate between the push and pull strategy. You know, uh, we've gone over that in uh, previous chapters, uh, but is is applicable, uh, to, I guess, to all the, the chapters in marketing and or sales. Uh, different types of sales promotions. So sales promotion are activities that supplement a company's advertising, public relations, and personal selling efforts. Uh, samples, coupons, premiums, contests, uh, and rebates are examples of consumer sales promotion. Uh, everybody loves coupons. I'm sure you guys have seen couponing. Uh, and all those people go to the grocery store and actually end up getting money back because they have so many coupons. Uh, 
Loyalty programs are sales promotions designed to get repeat business. So if I'm at O'Charlie's, and this is true, this is what happened. And, you know, I've got a, two sandwiches. I say if I get three more sandwiches, then I get a free one. Yeah, I'm definitely going to O'Charlie's three more times, right? So it's a very smart way to do things. Uh, business to business marketing sales promotions are called trade promotions because they are targeted to uh, channel members who conduct business or trade with consumers. Uh, trade show is an event in which a particular industry display uh, and demonstrate their offerings to other organizations and hope that they will buy them. Right? You like our product, you know, like our ice machine, you know, let's 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 sign some contracts and let's start to do business. Uh, different types of sales promotions. So you have conventions or meetings with groups of professionals. Also provide a way for sellers to show potential customers uh, different products. Sales contests uh, provide incentives for salespeople that increase their sales. Uh, trade allowances give channel partners uh, different incentives to push the product, right? So remember we talked about push and pull. So we have our partners. You want to push push the product out to the consumers. Free merchandise also uh, can be used to get retailers to sell products uh, to consumers. Everybody likes freebies, right? Give away swag bag and get people uh, to love our love our product. Uh, so push versus a pull strategy. So businesses must also decide whether to use a push strategy, a pull strategy, or both push and pull strategies. And and more than likely, for the especially for the bigger companies, both push and pull is going to be relevant. A push strategy involves uh, promoting a product to business uh, or middlemen, such as wholesalers and retailers, uh, who push the product uh, through the channel, promoting to final co uh, consumers. So we want to push it to the wholesalers, push it to the retailers, and they are going to push it to the consumers. On the other way, uh, companies use a pull strategy when they target the final consumers with promotion. So now we're we're targeting the people. Uh, we're going to get them so excited about their product that they the, our product that they're going to go to these companies that don't have it in stock and make sure that they purchase it because they're missing out on all kinds of sales. <clears throat> Last key takeaway is that companies use sales promotions to get customers to take action. Right? Of course, we want them to take action. We want them to do something if we're selling something. Uh, to them. So as always, you know, press pause, read the last key takeaways, and uh, that'll be it for uh, for chapter 11. So all word uh, this week, we'll go through chapter 11 and also chapter 12, and then it's only uh, 13, 14, 15, and 16 from there. Uh, time certainly does fly. Uh, so that's it for chapter 11. Be sure to uh, take your quiz and uh, do very, very well, and then move, uh, move on to chapter 12. As always, I want you all to have a good day and a great week.